All right, so this is how the actual uh, you know hive looks like. So the meta store that we are talking about, the meta store can be in different ways. So initial days, you know, uh, or even today, when you talk about vanilla version of hive, which is actually nothing but the version that you get directly out from your uh, Apache version. Apache version doesn't use a MySQL database; it uses a Derby database. So Derby is a small, you know, a single instance database. Uh, so Apache Hive provides a Derby database. The problem with Derby is it only allows you to have one single connection at a time. So you cannot use Hive with Derby in a productionized cluster because it always gives you only one single connection. So other way is to set up a local meta store. So you can have multiple meta stores all connecting to a single MySQL. It can be one way or it can have a remote meta store. So you can have your actual Hive residing in one node and you can have a dedicated box which is working as a SQL store. So that these are the three ways in which an admin can configure Hive. So you can install it on the same node as a Derby database. You can install it as a you know, SQL box in the same database, or you can have a separate dedicated MySQL box which can act as a meta store. So normally, when you talk about productionized cluster, you normally talk about a remote meta store where the MySQL database will be always maintained and stored as a separate box, and that box can be uh, handling all your metadata information. Right, so this is more about how the meta store looks like. So, what are the limitations of Hive? Uh, well, you know, Hive is a data warehouse. It is not designed for online transactional processing. Second thing is, it doesn't offer real-time analytics queries. You know, because every query that you fire, every every SQL query that you try to write, is going to get converted into a MapReduce program. So, if you're getting converted into a MapReduce program, you know, it will always have latency issues, right? So, because we're talking about MapReduce program, MapReduce is a batch mode of programming. It always ends up having, uh, you know, uh, a latency. So you do not use SQL programs for real-time processing. It provides acceptable latency for interactive data browsing. So for, you know, you do not and you should not be using Hive as the backend of any web application or websites. You know, because web application or websites can be a part of your actual, uh, you know, uh, real-time data processing or the real-time, you know, interactions with the clients. You do not want to have a latency-based system. So it is. Highly not recommendable to have Hive as a backend data store for your web applications or websites. And latency for Hive queries is generally very high, it's in minutes. So if you run a program, if you run a process in Hive, it will normally run in minutes. So it is not used for all those ad hoc queries. It is not actually used for all those real time queries. And it's definitely not used for or used as the backend of an actual web application. All right, can it can be used for Oracle DB2 also in place of MySQL? Yes. So, you uh, know. I mean, uh, Cloudera and Hortonworks, they allow you the flexibility of installing a database, of Oracle or DB2 or MySQL, uh, any one of these three, not DB2 actually, I've seen Oracle, Postgres, and MySQL, any one of the three, uh, they allow you to become the meta store. So you can set up a separate box, install an Oracle machine in there, and make connection settings in your actual Hive, where the Hive can treat the Oracle box as a meta store. So yes, it is possible. All right, so abilities of Hive query language. So it, uh, ability is to filter rows from a table using a where clause. So you can use where conditions. So we have been talking about this, that you know, Hive is uh, very similar to what a normal SQL query engine should look like. So all your queries that are having where conditions, that 99.99% of the queries can run. Ability to do equijoins. So equijoins, left out a join, right out a join, all those join conditions, you can easily create and manage using Hive. So any table or table-based operations, uh, you know, are recommended to be done using Hive. Ability to uh, store the results of a query into Hadoop HDFS folder. So if you're creating a select query, the output of the select query can be pushed into another HDFS folder. So that is also possible. Ability to manage tables and partitions. So you can create and manage tables and create uh, you know, indexes, alter tables, or drop tables. So all of these are possible using Hive. Ability to store the results of a query into another table. So, if you have a table and you're querying on table on top of, if you're joining a couple of tables, all those table outputs can be pushed into another separate, you know, uh, folder in HDFS. So, all of these are the capabilities of Hive, and these are something that you can easily do with Hive. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, so it doesn't mean that even if you do not know Java, you can still work in Hadoop. Yes. So that's what I've been talking about, Bruno, for all these days, right? So. Hadoop is not supposed to be technology specific. You know, either you know Python or Hive uh, or, or Java. No, it is. It is more beyond technological or technical capabilities. If 
if you know and if you know how to handle data, then yes. You know, if you have the logic building capabilities, then yes, handle this for you.